Hi, today's lesson is on the standard form of a quadratic function. So here's a problem. We've already discussed this, which is the vertex form of the quadratic. How do we rewrite it in this form? Well, what we showed before is we just multiply it all out. Now, I'm not going to go into detail on this. I'm just going to show you the steps and kind of explain as I go. But I am going to skip a lot of steps just to show you because there's one pattern we're actually looking for. So first, we start with the vertex form. First thing we're going to do is we're going to multiply out the x minus h squared, which gives us a x squared minus 2xh plus h squared plus k. What we do from here is we're going to go ahead and distribute the a. So y equals ax squared minus 2axh plus a h squared plus k. And so now basically we are in standard form. So our a is a, our b is this part with the x at the end. I'll rewrite that in a minute. And this right here is all c. So we're in that form. So we know b equals this part right here. So if we set b equal to negative 2 a x h, we can actually find the x component of the vertex. And so if we solve for h, basically, actually I don't need the x now I think about it, because it's bx, so get rid of the x. So if we solve for h here, we get h equals negative b over 2a, which we are going to use this through this entire lesson today. This is the main thing that we're going to need to know. So using that form, we can find the vertex of any standard form equation. So if we take a look at this, the coefficients between each of these terms is your a, b, and c. So my a is 2. My b is negative 8. And my c is 10. So if we use the equation negative b over 2a, we can find the x component. So the way we do that is we just plug it in. So negative, negative 8 over 2 times 2, which would be 8 over 4, which is 2. Now that we found h to find k, all we have to do is plug it into the equation. So k would be, going back to the original, 2 times 2, squared, which is this 2 right here, minus 8 times 2, plus 10. And so to solve that out, all we have to do is plug it in the calculator. So using any calculator, we just go to parentheses 2 squared, minus 8 times parentheses 2, plus 10. Plug that in, we get 2. So this entire thing is 2. So our vertex is 2, comma 2. So this 2, then this 2. So using those steps, go ahead and try question 1. So using the vertex form, which we just found, we just found how to find the vertex. We're going to graph the quadratic function in standard form. So we're going to follow the same steps. First thing we're going to do is find the vertex, and then we're going to use the A to graph it. It's going to make it a lot faster. So first to find the vertex, we find A, which is 1, because there's a 1 right here. We find B, which is negative 4. We find C, which is 2. And I'm going to talk more about C in a minute. C has an, actually a very special thing about it. So to find the vertex, that's what we're going to do first. We're going to find vertex. We just plug into the equation. H equals negative B over 2A. So negative, negative 4 over 2 times 1, which would be 4 over 2, which is 2. To find K, we take this 2 and we plug it into the equation. 
So we get 2 squared minus 4 times 2 plus 2. Once again, using a calculator, just plug it in real quick, we get negative 2. So our vertex is 2, negative 2. So let's go ahead and graph that on the graph. So over 2, up 2, it's right here. Also, we know through the vertex from previous that we have the axis of symmetry. This equation right here, when you find h, is actually the axis of symmetry. When we plug it in, we actually find the y. So from here, I graphed it wrong. Sorry, I re messed up on the vertex. It's actually supposed to be negative 2 because I don't know how to graph apparently, which is great. But anyways, um, so from here, what we're going to do is we're going to use the A. Since A is 1, we're going to go to the right one unit and up one unit. We can go back one unit and up one unit like that. And then that will give us our graph. But I was going to talk about C. C is 2, which is the y-intercept. And that's what makes this so special. It is the y-intercept. So now we can go to the other side here and reflect it over. And then we get our nice graph. And just to let you know, I will be missing every single dot I draw on to have it. Awesome. All right, go ahead and uh, try this one. It's a multiple choice, so it should be a little bit easier. Now we're going to interpret the graph of a quadratic function. So the way they use functions in real life is they use it to model data so they can make predictions and things like that. They pay people a lot of money to do that. So if we look at the graph of this, it shows the profit of earnings. So you guys can read. But basically, this function shows the profit a company earns selling headphones at different prices. What is the maximum profit the uh, company can expect to earn? So when we talk about maximum, we're talking about the vertex. Since this is negative, we know the graph starts low, tops out, and ends low. So what we got to do is find this part right here. If we can find that, then we can find the maximum profit. And the way we do that is we just use our h equals negative b over 2a. So taking a look at this function, this here is a, this is b, this is c. So we just plug those in. So negative, negative 10, I mean negative, whoa, see we all make mistakes. Negative 700, there we go, over 2 times negative 10, which would be 35. And so once you get 35, you just plug into the equation, and that'll give us our k, which would be negative 10, it's 35 squared plus 700 times 35 minus 6,000. If we plug all that into a calculator, we get 6,250. So that is the maximum profit the company can make and expect to earn from selling headphones. Now, to get that maximum profit, they need to do an average of about 35 cents. Okay. Or actually, the... Um, yeah, never mind. It's the selling at $35, that's the most money they'll make because they gotta balance it a lot. So go ahead and try it with this one. 